So when Android 13 was released, one area where everybody was worried about was how good the custom ROM development will be. Because remember at that point, Android 12.1 based ROMs were pretty mature, they were running stable. Some ROMs also had MIUI camera coming up and things like those. But now, one to two months down the line, Android 13 ROMs are flying. They're, they are smooth, they are battery efficient, the performance is great and all the other things. Now in today's video, we are talking about the Mi 11X, also known as the Poco F3 and the Redmi K40. And the ROM in question is Proton Plus Official. We are talking about version 13.02, which is based on Android 13. I've installed it yesterday, been using it for more than 24 hours, and I'm here to give you guys a complete review. So before you install, watch this complete video. Hello everyone, my name is Kailash and welcome to PhoneOps. Let's dive into the complete review of this amazing ROM. So first things first, let's see what the developer exactly has to say. Now this is of course a November update, which means it comes with a November security patch. Proton Plus 13.02 official, Android 13 updated on the 21st of November. Now today is 24th of November when we are shooting this video, so it's a recent update. And if we talk about changelog, just like all the other ASP ROMs, the changelog is pretty, pretty long. So we're not going to go through that. But we do have an installation guide and you do need fast boot and a computer to sort of flash this ROM. So this is not a ROM which is flashable through TWRP recovery. And if a lot of people watch this video and like this video, I'll probably go ahead and make a complete install guide as well. Now, this is a hotfix build. Notes are here, G apps build. That means Google apps are included. Recommended firmware is 13.0.8 EEA. But I will tell you, I have installed this on 13.0.7 Indian update. So because this is a Mi 11X and if you are from Europe, I would recommend flashing this firmware before flashing the ROM. OTA pushed for existing users. That means this ROM does support OTA updates. Now, one good advantage of flashing through Fastboot is that you get the stock recovery of that ROM. And just like stock software from big, big companies like Xiaomi and Poco and Redmi, if you get an OTA update from the developer, it can be directly installed without you, you know, going into TWRP and flashing ROMs. Now, the moment you boot into any Android 13 based ROMs, the story is pretty straightforward. You get a very, very clean user interface and not much bloatware. And one thing that I've been loving about the Mi 11X and custom ROMs is the smoothness. This device just flies. No matter what custom ROM you give it, as long as it is pure AOSP, I, I really love the experience. Now, I do have my personal device over here, which is the iQ9T. This does come with the Fun Touch OS and this is also running Android 13. The reason I'm showing you guys this is because smoothness on AOSP ROMs is just next level. Now, this is a 870. This is a Snapdragon 8 plus Jet 1. A lot of generational difference as far as the horsepower is concerned. But yes, AOSP wins in smoothness most of the times. Now, as you can see, you get a complete stock UI. And if you go to the edit menu of these quick tiles, you do have a lot of customization including things like caffeine aod heads up ambient display and the works are always present now apart from this you do have nice am animations all around you do have this you know lock and unlock ripple animation when you use the fingerprint scanner to the left of course you have google feed which is available and works like a charm smooth as butter always now if we talk about the launcher over here let's see what we have we have the Pixel Experience Launcher, so pretty bare bones, some basic customization available. And we do have the quick wallpaper chooser available, which instantly changes your wallpaper with a very beautiful animation. Now the widgets are all here from Android 13, working as smooth as ever. And in the app drawer, something that you don't find is the MIUI camera. Now that is something that I miss on a lot of devices, but it's not that easy to port a stock ROMs camera to AOSPs. Although on the Redmi Note 10 Pro, quite a lot of ROMs have it, but you do get a very, very basic camera application over here. No portrait mode, no advanced features. So you know what to do. Install a Gcam and call it a day with the best XML file available. Apart from this, you don't really get any bloatware. So let's quickly dive into settings over here. So once you go to settings, you will see that it's pretty standard and smooth affair. If you go to the about section and you click on Android 13, you will see that this is Proton Plus with November security patch. And the kernel in question is the immensity kernel. So that is doing a great job as far as performance is concerned. As far as security of this ROM is concerned, you do get 
Play Store certification, safety net passes by default. That means your banking applications are not a problem. Connectivity wise, this ROM is doing a great job. I've not had any issues with Bluetooth connectivity, Wi-Fi connectivity or signal strength. I've used it with my SIM card for a day. Wi-Fi calling and cellular calling has been just great. Cell reception in most of the areas has been great. Although the Mi 11X is a phone that stays in the studio most of the times, but whenever I travel to the nearby areas, I've not really had any spotty reception at all. Now, important things to note over here, whenever you talk about custom ROMs, especially the AOSP ones, is the customization. That is the reason they call them custom ROMs, right? Now, as far as Proton Plus is concerned, you might not see a dedicated customization menu, but in the vanilla settings itself, you do have quite a lot of options. For example, if you go to notifications, you have your standard features of notification history, which you can enable and use. And something that is missing over here is the gaming mode. So let's go to apps over here. And yeah, the game dashboard is missing. But if you go to battery, you do have thermal profiles, which I'm using. I did run benchmarks as well. If we talk about the battery backup, now that is one area where I'm a little skeptical because I did not get more than four to four and a half hours of screen on time. So if you're someone who stays away from a charger for a very, very long time, I would not recommend you to try this ROM. But most of the time, once a day, you should be able to charge. And I think it's just fine. Charging speeds are okay. You do get around 28 to 30 watts of charging, which gives you around one hour, 20 minutes of charging speed for a battery, which I believe is 4,700 million parts. Now I did enable caffeine, but automatically it went off. I don't know why, probably a bug. But apart from that, I will tell you this, the smoothness is next level. The reliability is amazing. The fingerprint scanner and works just fine. So in terms of reliability and daily driver material, apart from being a, you know, slightly higher in terms of battery life, it's, it's pretty good, right? Now you do have something like battery manager, which is always present in Android 12 and Android 13. But if you go to sound and vibration, you do have a ton of customization here. If you go to the display menu, you do see that you have adaptive refresh rate. So minimum is 60, maximum is 120. That's what you get. And things like tap to wake are present as well. If you go to the security menu, you do get face unlock now on Android 13 ROMs. The Pixel 7 and 7 Pro brought Android 13 face unlock, so that is now available. Apart from this, if you go to system, you do have live translate, you do have gestures, backup, update, all the works and standard options. Now that's all said and done. What is the performance like you ask? I did try a couple of matches of Apex Legends and the Mi 11X has never disappointed me with the 870 and it was a similar story with this ROM as well. The device did not overheat. The gaming performance is pretty good. Only when we have extremely intense fights wherein you know you have more than four or five enemies, the FPS would drop to 50-ish, but most of the times it's above 55 and I call that a good experience on high settings. Let me know in the comment section if you want me to make a complete gaming review. Now let's talk about performance numbers. I don't, you know, really believe in synthetic benchmarks, but they do give you some idea as well. So let's talk about N22 benchmark over here. Now, as you can see, it did score 698.810. That's a splendid score. And 6.5 degrees is the temperature increased by, and we lost about 5% battery. Now, even the CPU throttling test on this particular ROM was amazing. So let's quickly go to Google Photos because ASP ROMs, you know, they don't come with a gallery application. So let's see, where do we have Google Photos? So when we talk about the CPU throttling test, the results are excellent. You do get around 87% of throttling. The average score is 269.432 and the max score is 294.784. So remember when I told you that the battery life is not that great? Look at these numbers. The performance is amazing. It is consistent and the device is not even overheating. Now, when we go to Geekbench, you don't really get amazing numbers like MIUI, but they are respectable. They should give you pretty good gaming experience. 958 single core and 2842 multi-core. So all in all, if you ask me, Proton Plus for the B 11 x is doing a great job. I've used it for more than 24 hours and I can definitely recommend you to try this. As long as you're okay to charge your device, maybe more than once a day, very rarely. But most of the time in standby times and all, it's pretty good. Let me know in the comment section what do you think about this video. I'll see you in the next one. Keep smiling. Take care. Goodbye.